Hey everyone, my name is Jess. Welcome to my page. Here we discuss universal reconciliation. If you'd like to learn more, please check out my comment below, pinned it to the top. Click those links to learn the glorious truth that Jesus Christ in fact saved every single person and every single being on the planet, including Satan himself. All right, so today's topic is it's about the age of accountability. What is the age of accountability? Well, I'm gonna give you a quick answer. There is no age of accountability. Every single denomination has a different idea of what that age is. But first let me define what the age of accountability is. If someone dies before they reach a certain age, he or she receives salvation despite not accepting Jesus as their savior. Once a child knowingly sins, they have become accountable for their actions and will go to hell if they do not accept Jesus as their savior. Now the Baptist convention uh, that meet up every year agreed that the age of accountability must be around the age of 12, 12 years old. So once your child turns 12 or 13 years old, he or she, if they die, which hopefully they don't, <laughs> will burn in hell forever if they don't accept Jesus as their savior. There's a lot of teenagers burning in hell right now. Isn't that crazy nonsense? It's not even biblical or found anywhere in the Bible. When I was a Pentecostal, one time the apostle had a sit down and watch a near death experience on YouTube. You can find them. There's like millions of those videos. And we're all sitting there watching this near death experience. And this one girl, she's screaming in pain and agony, saying that she went to hell because she didn't accept Jesus and she got into a car accident and died. There was this other guy who was an alcoholic. He said he just liked to drink alcohol and he didn't see what the problem was, although he still believed in Jesus, but he went to hell for drinking alcohol. Then there was someone else who didn't tithe. This person went to church every Sunday, but she did not give her 10%. So guess what? She's burning in hell for eternity. Her skin is going to melt and then somehow it's gonna magically grow back and then it's gonna melt again. And this is all at the hands of a loving God. He is the one who tortures people, according to mainstream Christianity. It's crazy how wicked people's hearts are to think that an all-loving God would be torturing most of mankind. And I used to have a lot of sympathy towards the Christians because there are scriptures that talk about eternal torture, but there are plenty of scriptures that talk about the salvation of all mankind. And I remember when I was deep into all of this, I would read these scriptures that the scriptures where Jesus is the lamb that takes away the sin of the world, how everyone will be vivified again because of what Christ did. And I would question, those scriptures would really stand out to me as something special. And I remember thinking to myself, I wish these scriptures were true. Wouldn't it be great if everyone was saved? And you know, thankfully God pulled me out of the deception of eternal hell. So yeah, we know the truth, that there is no such thing as eternal hell. Hell can actually be broken down into three different words, um, Hades, Sheol, Gehenna. I haven't studied that in a while, but there's a great book on Martin Zender talking about hell. It's called Martin Zender Goes to Hell. We know that the ration of sin is death. It's not eternal hell. You can find it in Romans 6.23. For the ration of sin is death, yet the grace... Gracious gift of God is life union in Christ Jesus our Lord. Death is the opposite of life. So once you're dead, you're dead. You're not alive. We also know that Christ gives life to all. In 2 Corinthians 5, 19, it says that how God was in Christ conciliating the world to himself, not reckoning their offenses to them and placing in us the word of con conciliation. It means everybody it doesn't just say that he's giving life to believers. No, it says to the, he's conciliating the world to himself, the world, everybody, not just believers. That's the really good news. Everyone will be saved in their own order. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 23 talks about that. Those who believe now have what's called Ionian life. That means that you get to rule and reign with Jesus in the celestials. You also have peace with God, knowing the truth that Jesus is not torturing your brother who may have passed away from a drug overdose or a, a car accident. Um, you just have that peace now that you can't have in Christianity. So yes, yeah, so those who believe now do have Ionian life. That means you get to rule and reign with Christ. 
Um, those who do not believe in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, that Jesus, in fact, died for the sins of mankind, was entombed, and that God roused him on the third day, does not have union life. But it's okay because God is sovereign, and he's the one who already preordained, predestined, preordained people to be in the body of Christ. He has a good plan for every single human, and every single human, and even Satan himself, is going to live um, in perfect harmony and peace with God forever, eventually, at the consummation. There is no bad news and good news. So be at peace and rest in God. Know that he is sovereign. And if you have a brother or sister who passed away without accepting Jesus Christ as their savior, it's okay because that was meant to happen. Because God is sovereign. That was meant to happen. And God has a great plan for your brother and sister. I can tell you right now that God is not burning your brother and sister or mother or uncle in hell forever. That used to torment me a lot. A lot. It just didn't make sense to me how, you know, people would get shot without knowing the Lord and go to hell for it. It just didn't seem fair to me at all. It just was like, wow, God, like, it's just an evil doctrine of demons, eternal hell that slipped into all of the um, common Bibles. So if you're new to this page, check out the Concordant Bible. You can find that at concordant.org. This is the most accurate Bible uh, that you are going to find. Other than that, I'm just going to read 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. This is how you have Ionian life. God puts the faith of Christ in you, and he is the one that gives you life Ionian. Now I am making known to you, brethren, the evangel, which I bring to you, which also you accepted, and which also you stand through, which also you are saved. Past tense. If you are retaining what I said and bringing the evangel to you, for I give over to you among the first, but also I accepted that Christ died for our sins, according to the scripture, that he was entombed, and he has been roused the third day, according to the scriptures. So he died. The opposite of, of death, or the opposite of life is death. He had no conscience. He wasn't alive. He didn't go to heaven. He didn't go to hell. He was dead. I wasn't aware of anything. He went to, uh, was it Sheol? The unseen, unperceived, or is that Hades? I don't know, guys. So I need a reminder. It's been a little while. Um, I think that's it, guys. So just be encouraged. Be at peace. Know that God is sovereign. This world is crazy right now, but God has it. Every little detail completely in, in his power. And every little detail that happens in your life happens for a reason. As hard as that can be to believe some days. Um, check out my comment below. All right. And follow me on Instagram if you have one. Bye, guys.